Hello and welcome to this video on parallel lines and the relationship between them. Now we've got two parallel lines here. Now in terms of the equation of a straight line, what do they have in common? Well, they have the same steepness and therefore they must have the same gradient. Because remember that gradient just means steepness. So for example, if that gradient m was half, then the gradient of this line would also be half. They might have different y-intercepts, so it could be that this equation is y equals mx half x plus 5, um, but this has a different y-intercept, so it might be y equals half x plus 2. So they have the same gradient, the same m value, but they have different y-intercepts. And that's really the only principle we're going to be exploring this video. So let's look at a few examples. Find the equation of the line which passes through 0, 5 and is parallel to another line with equation y equals 3x minus 2. Now it may help to sketch this. So we want the equation of a line which passes through 0, 5. Let's just say that 0, 5 was here. And it's parallel to another line with equation y equals 3x minus 2. If it has equation y equals 3x minus 2, the y intercept is minus 2, so it goes through like this. And a gradient of 3, that will be quite steep, so it will look like this. So that's y equals 3x minus 2. And we want to find the equation of this line. It's parallel to it. So this is a line we want here. That one. Now... If that gradient of this line is 3, then we know the gradient of this line must also be 3. But can you see, because it goes through the point 0, 5, this line that we want the equation for, that is the y-intercept. It cuts the y-axis a y-value of 5. So therefore, we have everything we need. We've got the m-value is 3, we've got the c-value is 5, and we know the equation would be y equals 3x plus 5. Can you notice that we never actually use the y-intercept of the other line? It's irrelevant. If it's parallel to this particular line, we know it has the same gradient, uh, a gradient of 3, but we don't care about the y-intercept of the other line. What about this second one? Find the equation of the line which passes through the point 3, 3 and is parallel to the line with equation y equals 4x. Now, if it's parallel to this line with equation y equals 4x, well, the m here, the value in front of the x is 4, so we know that the gradient of the other line, which is parallel to it, is also 4, and it passes through 3, 3. So the line we're interested in passes through 3, 3, and because it's parallel to that, it also has gradient 4. So we can use the technique we saw in a previous video to work out the equation. Do you remember that we write y equals mx plus c using the information we have so far? So y equals m x plus c, where we know the m, m is 4, but we don't yet know the y-intercept. We can't say the y-intercept is 3 because that x value is not 0 there. And then, because we know this point lies on the line with this equation, that must satisfy this equation so we can substitute the values in. So if it lies on 3, 3, if we sub these values in, that's the x value, that's the y value. y, which is 3, is equal to 4 times x, well 4 times 3 is 12, plus c, and if we subtract 12 from both sides we can see that c is minus 9, and therefore, well we've got the c, and we've got the m, so we've got everything we need, y equals mx plus minus 9, but you could just write minus 9 like that. And one final question before the test you're understanding one, are the lines with equations 2x minus 3y equals 6, write that down, and 5 plus 4x equals 6y, are they parallel? Now, do you remember from a previous video, to find the gradient of a line where the equation isn't in the form y equals mx plus c, we just need to make y the subject. So if we concentrate on the first equation, we've got 2x minus 3y is equal to 6. Now, y is being subtracted from something. So do you remember the swapsy trick? We can swap the thing that we're subtracting and the result. Just like if 8 minus 5 is 3, then 8 minus 3 is 5. We can swap those two things there. So that gives us 2x minus 6 equals 3y. We've nearly made y the subject. Now, y's been multiplied by 3. We're going to get rid of that 3. So we're going to divide everything by 3. Do you remember you divide each term individually by 3? Don't put the whole thing over 3. Minus 2 is y. And now we can see the gradient is just the coefficient of x. It's a number in front of x, which is 2 thirds. Let's do the same with the other line. We've got 5 plus 4x equals 6y. 
Now this one's a bit easier because 6y is already on its own, so we just need to divide both sides by 6. So we have 5 over 6 plus 4 over 6, which is the same as 2 thirds, is equal to y. Now the gradient here is the number in front of x, the coefficient of x, which is 2 thirds. And we need a conclusion. So you say the gradients are equal, therefore that three dot thing there means therefore parallel. One final test your understanding question, I want you to work on this. The two lines are parallel, so this line and this line is parallel. We know this line goes through the point 49, and this line here has the equation y equals half x plus 3. And we want to find the coordinates of a. And just as a clue, you may want to find the equation of this line first, because then we can find a. So you may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at this question. Right, let's do it. Let's find the equation of this line first. Well, it's parallel to this line with equation y equals half x plus 3. So we know it has the same gradient, i.e. half. And we know this line here, that's what we want the equation for, goes through the point 4, 9. So it goes through the point 4, 9. And we want to find the equation of that. So we know we can initially write y equals mx plus c. We know the m, we don't yet know the c. And then because it goes through the point 4, 9, we can sub those values in. So that gives us y, which is 9, equals half times x, half times 4 is 2, plus c. So can you see that therefore 2 plus 7 is 9, so c is 7. So we know that the equation of the top line is y equals half x plus 7. Now, do you notice that A is just a y-intercept of this line that we have the equation for? And we can see from here, the y-intercept is 7. So therefore, that must have the coordinates 0, 7. So A has coordinates 0, 7. Well done if you got that right.